Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jordan Sweeney, the general manager here at the beautiful Burnham Wood Golf Club. Um, sorry to, I mean, just it's gonna be hard for me. Just let you know now, but uh, Ryan was such a special person in all of our hearts. Um, he was only here for two years and he really affected not only our membership, but he greatly affected our, our team here. Um, so, uh, this is what I do when I talk, when I think about Ryan because of what he, what he did to me, you know, he affected me so, so much. This last week and a half has been really hard where I would literally just go home and just stare, just sit and stare where I really had no words, I'd, like I didn't understand. And so um, for everyone that doesn't know me, um, I used to play music professionally and a way for me to get closure is just to jot things down. And so if you turn, turn over your, your program, I actually wrote a little song that I'm gonna perform, I'm gonna try to perform here. Just to, it's, it's, it's not about Ryan per se, but it's more about how I think we're all feeling, you know, because, you know, like the third lyric, my mind has been frozen because it, it just doesn't understand. And, and that's kind of how I feel. So I, I have a cold, so I'm going to try to get through this the best I can. But Israel, if you could help me. So Mike thought it would be a good idea. Ryan and I spent a lot of time out on the golf course, especially this past winter. Holy hell. <laughs> this is my first storm here as GM, and Ryan and I kind of had to deal with it together. But Ryan, or Mike, or, or Mike, or Roscoe, sorry. Mike Goodcase thought it would be a good idea to bring part of the creek up here with us since we spent so many hours in it. <laughs> so that's why there's rocks up here. All right. So feel free to follow along on your program. This song's called Shell of a Man. Lingers in my mind 
sitting here writing as a shell of a man and wondering when I'll be able to stay It's always the one who have so much more life to give. I pray to the sky. God has a plan, but sometimes you say. Thank you. I needed that song. I mean, that's, that's what I do. I mean, I've had many obstacles in my life. And it just helps me get closure. Um, so on a personal note, Ryan and I have had, we have weekly meetings. We had weekly meetings. And um, we do them in my office, or sometimes we do them out on the course. And in these meetings, Ryan was always so vested in what I needed. Jordan, how can I help you prepare for your meeting? Jordan, how can I help you do this and that? And I would always, I, I swear, every time I'd have to turn, Ryan, these are your meetings. <laughs> what do you need from me? You know, how can I help you? But that was Ryan. I, I couldn't change that. Um, I've known him for many years, and he is the most selfless person I've ever met. He has, he's always thinking of others, and rarely himself, till the very end. Um, there'd be times where he left a green committee meeting feeling kind of down, or especially with this past winter, where he, I'm sure every superintendent in here knows how hard it how hard it is to be a, a superintendent out here and when it's raining 43 inches and you can't drive equipment. <laughs> and Ryan was, you know, down on himself because this is his first full year, right? Where, or second full year, but where he really wanted to be out there and shine. But I would go up to him when I noticed that when he was down, having a hard day or whatever, and I said, Ryan, are you all right? What, can, what do you need? And this is a phrase that I will always remember. This is one thing that I've learned from Ryan that I and my team uses it. He says, Jordan, it's only temporary. That was Ryan saying, it's only temporary. The grass will grow. The weather will change, right? And I'll always remember that phrase for the rest of my life because he is right. Ryan had a good way of living in the now, helping people remember that things are temporary. But it's how we persevere and learn from those moments. I do have a few funny memories of Ryan. Ryan had a great sense of humor. Um, first one being on Mother's Day, uh, 2022, I want to say. We had about 400 people out on the patio here. And Ryan and his team had set the 18th pin on the far left back so when people were trying to chip in, some of the balls were coming onto the terrace. <laughs> and so figures, this is probably about 10 or 11, and Ryan's team had already left for the day. And little did I know, Ryan was already enjoying his Mother's Day in his house. But I called him, I said, Ryan, I have a favor to ask. Is your team still here? He said, no, it's just me. Well, can you move the pin? <laughs> I said, Someone already hit a ball, it almost hit, it almost hit somebody in the head, can you move it all the way to the right? So, you know, when their team, their approach, they get hit over there. Ryan said, yeah, I'll be right there. He showed up and Louie, is Louie here? So Louie and I greet him on the green and he's acting kind of funny. Like, it's like, 
very, very, very happy. <laughs> and then I saw him staring at, he's just staring at the green. I'm like, Ryan, do you need help? Like, what's going on? He goes, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> right? And it was la later, you know, a couple weeks later, I found out he was three Bloody Marys deep, too. But, <laughs> but that, that was Ryan. You know, he did what it takes to get the job done. And I think he was having a hard time kind of figuring out that work-life balance, you know, living here at Burnham. But it's a great memory. Um, <laughs> another funny moment I have is when I, we went to Peter Kavoyan's Christmas party and, and Ray Wynn, who are here. Um, on the invitation, it said, dress festive. <laughs> I think the picture's up here, too. But, but uh, knowing Peter Cavoy and Ray Wynn, you know festive means classy as heck, but maybe a funny tie. <laughs> and so, sure enough, when we get there, everyone's in a tie. I'm wearing a suit and a nice festive tie. And Ryan shows up in a festive plaid, buttoned down with a big farmer's hat. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures up here is great. And when we get there, Ryan goes, Jordan, I look like an effing farmer. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> we ended up staying. I said, no one's going to notice. You're fine. Just come in. And we ended up having a good time. But so he said, Jordan, it said festive. Um, one of my favorite Ryan moments was one thing we here I need some water when we lead our department meetings here I don't lead them anymore my team does I sit on the side and I'm there for them but the reasoning behind it is you know they're the professionals in the field and they're the ones communicating with each other and they need to be good at it so it was a good way for me to measure their communication their leadership skills and their organization skills so when we started doing this way, I needed a guinea pig. I needed the first you know, executive to lead the meeting. And of course, I chose Ryan because of his sense of humor, but also his professionalism and his creativity. And so we're joking all week. Ooh, Ryan, can't wait for your meeting. And he's, oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best. OK. And it really was. It ended up being four hours. <laughs> We joked about Ryan, too. You couldn't get him to shut up sometimes. But um, anyways, we come into this meeting, and he's sitting there. Will's right next to him. And he has a stuffed koala, which we found yesterday at, at the house. He had a stuffed koala, a Nerf football, two Monster Energy drinks, <laughs> and, a, and a bottle of Advil. And I'll get to why he had all that. But he was so creative. Uh, all right. You know, and he... In the, in the meeting, he, he wanted, he was really organized, you know, one person talking at a time, and that person had to hold the koala. So we're holding the koala. And if somebody needed to talk, we had to call an audible, because, you know, Ryan was such a sports guy. We had to throw the football to the person that was talking, or that wanted to talk. And so there was balls flying everywhere, but it was, it was really well done. And he really ran an effective meeting. But, um, Afterwards, I'm like, Ryan, what was the monster in the Advil for? He's like, oh, I totally forgot. That's what it takes to start my day. <laughs> I wanted to tell everyone. Two monster energy drinks and a bottle of Advil. <laughs> Gosh, he's such a goofball. Uh, but during the interview process, I know there's a few people here on the, that, was on, that were on the search committee. But uh, we were pretty set to hire somebody. And then... Um, Mr. Anderson, who couldn't make it, um, he, he says, Jordan, I don't feel comfortable saying we only interviewed two people bringing us to the board. Can you, can you find me some more candidates? I said, yeah, let me see what I can do. We didn't post this anywhere. But I called the only two superintendents I ever worked with. One was Ryan, and one was Kurt Desiderio, who's back there. And I said, hey, you know, Kurt, Ryan, I need candidates. We have, we have our eyes set on this one guy, but you know, we just need to interview some more people if you know anyone. And then he writes me back. He said, uh, yeah, me. I said, oh, well, uh, you know, you've been there for 17 years. Aren't you happy? He said, yeah, I'm really happy, but this is Burnham Wood. This is Burnham Wood. You know, if everyone that doesn't know, Ryan started at the Valley Club here 
as an intern. He lived in a cottage and then you know, he left and he always wanted to get back. He said he always had his eyes set for Valley of Burnham to retire. That was his dream job. So I said, all right, let's give him a shot. And I found two other candidates. And Ryan came in and he just stole the show. He was so organized. He had these binders with green scans and all these different things. And he just really blew the search committee away. We said, wow, Ryan, I think Ryan's our guy. And, and boy, we were right. Just what he's done for me personally here, just his presence and what I've learned from him just as a person. He, like God put him here for all of us to persevere and to live life. You never know when you're going to go. You know, he died on Good Friday. You know, I'm a Catholic. I'm going to preach a little bit here. I'm a practicing Catholic and I've been trying to go to daily Mass here at, at the our Lady of Mount Carmel, but I listen on my way up. I listen to this podcast on the Hallow app. If you don't have it, get it if you're Catholic or if anyone. Um, and there was this really good talk on Good Friday, and it was all about death. Um, and in it, they were saying there's so many people that think about it, they're up there at the gates just praying for one hour to reconcile their life. You know, and I think, you know, when I think about Ryan, so I think, like he is, he, I'm not saying he died for us, but it's a wake-up call. You never know. I was with him all day the day before, out on the course. We had a department meeting. I was out on the course with him, looking at the creeks, talking to Posey Bond about the excavation. And then the next day, just like that. So I have, I have one last story. Every board meeting here, for everyone that doesn't know, Burnham has all of their meetings at 8.30 in the morning, <laughs> when other clubs, normal clubs, have them at, at night. <laughs> but everyone's retired here, except Brian DeBonds. <laughs> but um, so I usually stay in a cottage because I don't want to have to deal with the traffic and stuff like that. And, Often I would call Ryan because he lived here. I'm like, Ryan, where are we going for dinner? <laughs> and we'd go out to dinner. Um, we went to the Miramar. I wanted to treat him for all the work he's done in the winter. You know, and we went to Caruso's. And let me go back a little bit. Ryan, I've never seen eat ever. In the meetings, he doesn't have a cup of coffee. He drinks water only, and he never eats a muffin. I've never seen him eat. Even at his at Marty's famous barbecues. <laughs> I've never seen him take a plate or eat. It's very odd. And tell Miramar, boy, can he eat. <laughs> he just, oh my gosh, we had just an amazing meal. But what made that experience so special is we just talked about life. We didn't talk about work. He was, he really loved his life and he really loved his family. He talked about his brother Richard and his mom all the time. And he kept, you know, Jordan, you're so blessed. We're so blessed. Look at us right now. We're sitting at Caruso's on the club's dime. <laughs> and we're enjoying this amazing meal. And we just kept talking about it. What we're going to do here together. You know, these two rock stars together. I can't wait to get past this winter to show everyone what I can do. So in closing, I know I'm going to ramble forever, but I guess although Ryan's passing is tragic and he's caused people a lot of pain, just know his legacy will be remembered forever, especially for me and everyone that he's worked with. I know he's up there. We, Nora and I, Nora's Ryan's mom here, uh, have been talking about how Ryan's probably up there just apologizing because that's he was such a humble person. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Jordan. Sorry for putting you through all this. I could so see him doing that. So God bless everyone. Thank you. Rest easy, Ryan. All right, I'd like to...
uh, invite up Jenny Deuce, who was Ryan's general manager at North Ranch, where Ryan worked for 17, 17 years. Whole mama. It's a long time. I'm gonna mic you too, because we're, we're video. video. Leave it right there, and then we'll just okay. do it like that. Thanks. This is me. That's mine. It has lipstick on it. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jenny Deuce. I'm the general manager at North Ranch Country Club. First of all, thank you so much to Nora and the family and Burnham Wood for inviting the North Ranch team here. Um, we are so glad that, to be included and to celebrate Ryan's life. Many of the maintenance workers worked with Ryan for all of 17 years, so it's such a blessing to be here. Um, probably gonna hear a lot of the same stories, although I'm not gonna sing like Jordan, so, um, but there's a lot of the same things that um, Jordan experienced at Burnham that, that we did at North Ranch as well. Um, I'm going to do my best to keep it together, so just a forewarning. Um, I first met Ryan in January of 2016. I was hired as the general manager and coming in as the new GM is always challenging, um, especially since I hadn't met any of the leadership team prior to my first day. So it's kind of a, a little bit of an awkward situation until they get to know you. Um, but that week I went on my first course tour with Ryan and he drove me around the property, helped familiarize me with the nines and what was going on, the naturalization project and all the wells, um, which I know way more about wells than I ever thought in my world I would ever know. Um, but he was so easy to talk with. And quickly we found out we had a lot in common. First of all, I love dogs. I and mean, he had two of them at that time. And Australian Shepherds are the best. My husband and I had one when we first got married. And, um, I would love watching them run around and um, see them chase the geese as well as, you know, visit them when I went down to the maintenance shed. Um, next thing I found out we had in common is that we both loved the Seahawks. I grew up in the Northwest. He loved Russell Wilson when he played for the Hawks. So being down in Southern California surrounded by Rams fans, having another 12th man fan was pretty fun. We would talk about the games and football during the season often. We also spoke a lot about his family. He loved returning home and visiting with them. He was a very proud uncle. His nephews are the same age as my son, and we would often talk about the adolescent years and compare the stories between what, what the kids were going through. As did Jordan, we also had weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings, most of the time, some on the course, some in, in the office, but we would discuss a lot of important North Ranch items, but most of the time we'd just talk about life. It, I enjoyed those talks so much. It's interesting to look back over the last five years and everything that went through in that condensed amount of time, uh, the 100 year storm that dumped seven inches of water on the property. Some of you guys remember that, right? Um, 24 hours of, and it was just so much water flowing through the whole property. There were rivers that came out of nowhere. Following that was the Woolsey fire that forced evacuation of our course and surrounding area. It affected our staff, our members, our team, the property. Even though we weren't supposed to be around the course during the evacuation, my family, my family and I showed up and sure enough, who was there? Ryan. He was there trying to spray out whatever fires he could find on the property. Um, and to this day, I don't know how the maintenance shed didn't burn down, right? There was flames all the way around that building. Somehow, I have no idea how it still stands. And then after the fires, as everyone up here in this area is well familiar with, came more rain and then the muds. So we would have to close the course, get the fairways cleaned up, just in time to do it again next week when it rained again. Then of course, we had the crazy pandemic, which we're all well too familiar with. The point being, that is a whole lot of events to go through in five years. You know, we went through a lot in a short amount of time, but it brought our team closer together. However, through all these challenges and tough times, we had a lot of laughs. So I'd like to speak now about who Ryan was from my perspective, as well as share some fond memories from myself and some of the team members. These are just a, a few. I promise there were many more, but only certain ones could be shared out loud. 
Um, Ryan was dedicated, it was evident. During all of the challenges, he was there, he was present, and he cared. It caused stress on him for sure, but he still showed up every day with a positive attitude. He would work into the late hours or early morning, and you never knew what time you might get an email from him. Ryan was kind. He cared tremendously for his team who worked for him and who, who he worked with. He became friends with many members and staff throughout his time at North Ranch. He went on golf trips, went to some rivaling Rams and Seahawks football games, and spent many hours talking to members about the course. Ryan was thorough, really thorough. For those of you who are on my team, and likely at Burnham Wood, you've experienced this as well and understand what I'm saying. If I ever wrote Ryan an email asking him one question, there was absolutely no way I would ever get a two sentence answer back. It would be a two page dissertation about the question I just asked him. To say the least, brief was not in his vocabulary. This may have also been the reason for some of our lengthy work, uh, department head meetings too, Jordan. Most importantly, Ryan was funny. He made us laugh. Some of the photos behind me um, are some of the stories I'm gonna share and some of the ones that my team gets a kick out of for sure. So one employee, and I don't have a picture of this one, but one employee's summer party, he volunteered to be in the dunk tank. I hadn't seen Ryan in a t-shirt ever before, um, but he put himself out there, allowed the staff to take turns throwing the ball at the target to dunk him. He was a very good sport, and I actually honestly had no idea he was jumping into the dunk tank. Um, North Ranch has hosted the Southwestern Intercollegiate Golf Tournament for the last 44 years, and in the past three years, we've been on the Golf Channel. Well, as many of you know, Ryan was also a little bit of a nervous person. So the first year we were on the Golf Channel, Ryan rolls in in a camper trailer to the maintenance shed, and he ends up sleeping on site the entire duration of the event because he wanted to be there early or late or whatever was needed to make the course ready for the conditions. The funniest part of all this is all of a sudden, one night, you'll see the, the creepy rogue picture up there. Um, he, shows, he sends us on our group text a picture of him in a blue robe, slippers, a Seahawks beanie, and a headlamp. It was pretty hilarious. So that is still our WhatsApp photo for our team to this day. Also continuing on his dedication, we'd put on events and concerts on the range for the membership and Ryan would be here late with some of his team helping, helping set up. Primarily it was to make sure we didn't damage anything on the driving range, but then he would sometimes stay and enjoy the concert and hang out with us. And then the one photo up there with the pool noodles on his head, um, one in the thick of COVID, I believe, I don't know, Tatiana, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we were going down to celebrate another coworker's anniversary. So we go down and promptly see Ryan with a hard hat on with duct tape of two six foot pool noodles to his head to make sure everyone had proper spacing. <laughs> and it was pretty funny. Also during COVID, haircuts became a rare occurrence. One day after many months of not having a haircut, Ryan sends our group chat a picture just straight up on his head. It, it, he actually looked ridiculous. We have an annual department manager gift exchange and Tatiana took the opportunity to use Ryan needs a haircut photo and put it on some socks. And that was the white elephant gift on the socks. Needless to say, it literally was the funnest gift of, of, the, of the gift exchange. And then going back to the dogs, Ryan originally had two dogs when I first met him. Then one day he comes into my office and says, Jenny, I got a new addition. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, come out here and take a look. So I walk up to his truck and see this new pup he just got. That it ha he said it was supposed to be a mini Australian Shepherd. I asked Ryan what his name was and he said, I don't know yet. And then Ryan told me he purchased this dog from you know, some woman, and he said, and the dog wasn't an eight-week puppy. So I'm like, Ryan, the dog has to have a name. What is the what is the dog's name? He goes, I think I need to change it. I go, why? Because they named him Bentley. <laughs> That's just weird. I can't call my dog my last name. So. It was like two weeks before the dog got a name. I have no idea what he called him in the meantime, but finally I said, Ryan, have you thought of a name? He's like, I don't know. And I said, well, I know someone else who named their dog Bogey. And he goes, 
Yeah, that kind of makes sense. This dog is a troublemaker. He annoys the crap out of Bo and Brady all the time. I think that's a good name. So that's how, and this may not be a true story, but that's what he told me and I fell for it. So I fell for it. Um, when Ryan gave his notice, he told us he was moving on to Burnham Wood. We were shocked, sad, but also happy for him at the same time. I know this was a difficult decision for him, but I could tell he was happy. He gave us six weeks notice, I think, which turned into the longest going away party ever. <laughs> we had a golf tournament with the members and some of, his, some of his very close friends. Taco days, department heads send off. And it seemed to go on and on and on and on for weeks. Um, my daughter's an artist and I asked her to draw a picture of Bo, Brady and Bogey and we framed it to give to Ryan as a going away gift. Sorry. We made an extra print that we still have on our fridge of those three dogs. Ryan meant a lot to the team, the members of North Ranch, and I hope some of these stories make you smile as Ryan made us smile. So, next. Thank you. So, I encourage anyone that has a funny story to tell about Ryan or anything that we'd want to share to come on up and share it with everyone so we could all remember it together. I wasn't planning to say a word too much today, but uh, um, I just, uh, I guess my comment here is simply that every now and again in our lives, we run into somebody who is special. And, uh, and Brian was one of those people. Uh, he was immediately likable. He was uh, kind, and uh, he listened. So I had the, the privilege of being able to meet with him, oh, I don't know, maybe five times at our Shakespeare Park. And the idea was that we were going to develop it into Shakespeare Park 2.0. And we're going to add a turtle pond and a stream and, and Ryan was just all in. I mean, he was, he embraced the concept. Uh, he wanted to develop it, make it kind of this participative space for all of the homeowners where they would have, um, you know, plantings throughout the year and we would have these perennials and annuals that would, you know, excite people. So daffodil plantings and various different ideas that came up. And again, he was uh, just all in. And um, so, um, you know, when I heard that, uh, that this happened to, to Ryan, it was uh, such an enormous shock, you know, of course, to all of us. But, um, but he lives on because those kinds of people do. You know, they take up a little bit of space in your head and you keep them in your heart, in your mind. And he will always be with me. You've got a very special person in your family. Thank you. You know, when you come to a new place, sometimes it's a little awkward or intimidating. Um, so I try to make a point of getting to know him and sitting next to him. And I remember one time I asked if he'd like to come over for dinner sometime. I selfishly had an ulterior, mo ulterior motive because I was hoping he'd come to my house and be like, oh yeah, that tree needs to come down and I'd play a piece instead of that. Um, but also, you know, to have him over to my house. My husband's a great cook and he, you know, would cook anything that Ryan wanted. And so Ryan, he, he said yes, but it was kind of tentative. Um, and then I found out later that Ryan didn't know I was married. And he thought I was asking him out on a date. And I just, it was such an ego boost to know that young Ryan would consider going out on a date with an old broad like me. It put a smile on my face. Uh, I never did get him over there to my house. But um, I'll just miss him very much. Well, hello everyone. Uh, it's been a while. Um, so I was here for many, many years, and I just wanted to say that when Ryan came, 
Um, we spent three pretty intense months together. Um, I was trying to tell him where the skeletons were buried and he brought so much when he came. Um, I just felt, I felt very good um, about the whole process and I was happy to see that he was here. I was happy to see that he was fully um, invested, you know, the, he, he took the, the residence that is provided and just totally made it into his spot with his dogs and all his activities and um, uh, he made a comment to me one time and I addressed this to uh, Rich Wagner as well because I think Rich probably um, I'd say knows Ryan as well as anyone because they worked together for so long and so things were going just fine um, we got along really well I really related to Ryan because uh, he's the same age as my two sons and I said, well, you know, we're about done. And so, you know, we'll be, obviously we'll be in touch. Um, but, um, you know, good luck and whatnot. And he goes, so you don't think you want to stay? And I said, I said, no, I, I think I'm done. And um, he said, you know, you can ask Rich. I'm a really good assistant. <laughs> and I said, I think you're a really good superintendent. So anyway, um, I definitely miss him. Thank you all for being here for Ryan. Um, yeah, thank you, Nora, Richard, for everything. Just God bless you, and we loved them. We did. We still do. Thank you. Hello, my name is Julie, and this is Mark. Um, um, Ryan was a dear friend of ours for a very long time. I met him through Mark, because Mark is one of his best friends. And I remember the first time I met him, <laughs> it was at the cottage in Valley, at the Valley Club. And I had never met him before, but I just hear, we're watching TV and I hear like a knock at the window and he's like, hey, Mark, I got girls out here. <laughs> and he was joking, of course, because I think he knew I was there. But he just was just, you know, and at first I was like, who is this guy? And, um, but then as I obviously got to know him, he just was such a kind man, um, a kind friend, a great friend. Um, not just to Mark, but to me too. And I just miss him so much. Yeah, thanks for being the best friend, Ryan. I've known you for 15 years. Um, you know, I'll never forget you. I think of you every day. And I'm going to miss you, buddy. I'll see you on the other side. I love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah. I work with Ryan over at North Ranch Country Club for two years. I was his administrative assistant. <sighs> Sorry. Um, and those two years, he made a huge impact to me. You know, you know, I was going through a very difficult time personally, and he was just a light. He was so positive. He made me laugh all the time. It made me think of, just think of the now, you know? And Jordan said it perfectly in there. And it made me cry because he said it perfectly, you know? And I wouldn't be where I'm at right now, professionally as well, if it wasn't for him. You know, uh, he always rooted for everybody that worked for him and worked us alongside of him as well. Uh, he was just such an amazing person and it sucks that um, he won't be with us anymore, but I know that he'll be with us in our hearts and all of his memories. Um, so uh, I just want to say thank you, you know, because he wouldn't be the way he is if it wasn't for, for you, for his mom, you know. Um, and thank you for sharing him with us because, uh, like I mentioned, I wouldn't be the way I am right now if it wasn't for him. Thank you. 